Hi everyone, I'm Tom and today we're going to have a look at a potential solution to a problem some printer manufacturers don't really acknowledge. Speed. And especially speed for those insanely large printers like the Big Rap, which for example has more than one meter of build space in every direction. Now if you simply use a regular sized hot end and nozzle, your print time is also going to increase proportionally with each dimension of the part you're printing. Scale it up by a factor of two in just one direction and the print is going to take twice as long. But if you scale it to twice the size in X, Y and Z, the print time is going to be eight times as long. So what would be a tolerable print time for a 20 by 20 centimeter build space suddenly becomes a print that takes 125 times as long if you entirely fill up a one cubic meter build space. And here's where the E3D Volcano comes in. It's big. It's fast, it's long, and its nozzle has a gaping hole the size of an Austral. Well, not quite, but it's pretty large. So it's really meant for printing plus-sized models on plus-sized printers. Now, the Volcano Kit itself builds on E3D's already proven designs and is meant as an upgrade for the V6 hotend. So the starter kit only includes a heater block, a nozzle, a heater cartridge, a thermistor with heat shrink and sleeving, and a few screws with a disposable hex wrench. You could reuse some of the parts that your V6 or V5 heater block uses, but since essentially everything that is part of the heater block sub-assembly is included, it makes it somewhat easier to swap between the regular and the long volcano heater block. The assembly itself is practically the same as the regular V6 block. The thermistor is securely held in place with the same combination of glass fiber sleeving and the number 3 screw. The heater cartridge now sits vertically along the melt zone and is clamped down with two screws instead of one, which had the heater block bending quite a bit when it tightened the screws the first time, which ultimately didn't matter, but it did look a bit scary at first. Either way, just like on the V6, it should make much better contact with the heater block than other solutions, for example using a grub screw and such. Now, since this is basically just a new heater block and nozzle, it still uses the standard M6 thread for the heat break, which means that the Volcano should work with any hardened E3D ever released. So you can either use the V6 heat break as intended, or the V5 heat break and heat sink, or even the Kraken style heat breaks that fit obviously the Quad Hot and Kraken, but can also be used in the Chimera and Cyclops heatsink. You could essentially make a double Volcano Cyclops V6 thing, or even use it as a Quad Volcano Kraken monster. Which would be absolutely insane. Be safe, kids. I'm going to use the Volcano on a V5 heat break and heat sink just because that's what I happen to have strapped into my printer at the moment. Now, obviously, the Volcano is a good bit longer than the standard heater block, and so is the nozzle. The purpose here is that the filament will have more time to thoroughly heat up, but it also means that you'll be losing some build height. Looking at what kind of printer the Volcano is geared for, okay, it's not really going to make a difference, but it's something you should keep in mind when setting up for the first print, as your Z end stop or any kind of bed probe will indicate the wrong height and potentially crash the Volcano right into the print bed. And since it has a longer lever to the turned down part of the heat break when compared to a standard block, it does make the already not so tough heat break another bit more fragile. So when it comes to actually printing with the Volcano, it's pretty much what you'd expect since it has a 0.8mm nozzle instead of a 0.4mm one, both your layer height and extrusion width should go up by about a factor of 2, for a total print time to decrease by a factor of 4. If you're feeling lucky and confident that your printer's mechanics won't start wobbling all around like jello, you can even increase the print speed past what you normally use with the regular heater block. The Volcano block seems to have plenty of power left for pretty insane speeds, but one snag I already ran into was my extruder simply not being able to keep up anymore. I run a fairly standard Greg's weight extruder that has a bit higher gear ratio than usual and I found that the stepper motor and driver just couldn't handle what were in fact ridiculously high speeds when I was trying to print the first layer with a 3mm extrusion width, a 0.8mm layer height and something around a 30mm second feed rate. So if you really want to use all the speed the Volcano can give you, you should definitely not be using the common Allegro drivers, but preferably at least the Trinamic TMC 2100 or even TI's DRV8825 drivers. Or you know, any driver that can actually make full use of the torque your extruder stepper motor can produce. Not only is the actual printing stupid fast, I mean look at this, this is the same part and the Volcano just sped it out like it was nothing. 
Okay, it only used like 15 layers for the entire part, but that is kind of like the point of the entire thing. One other thing that you initially don't think about is that slicing and transferring files also gets faster, as there's simply much less data to be processed. Well, that's again probably not so much of an issue for smaller prints. It does make a very noticeable difference on the machines that the Volcano is intended for. The print quality is very much exactly what I expected. When you're printing with fat layers with a large nozzle, of course you aren't going to get the same kind of detail reproduction that you'd get with a setup that's optimized for just that. But I've mentioned it before somewhere. I like big bores and I cannot lie. Having those visible, beautifully aligned layers is very aesthetically pleasing in its own way. While it's obviously not ideal for every print, the look does work really well on simple shapes or whenever you want to emphasize the digital or lo-fi side of 3D printing. And for larger parts, the fatter layers become much more of a texture for the part instead of a visual artifact anyways. One thing that surprised me was how little ooze the volcano seems to have. This is a huge factor for those blobs that you see where one extrusion line ends and the next one starts. And there is practically none. I guess that's because the large nozzle allows only very little back pressure to build up inside the heated zone and relaxes tension in the filament along the feed path between the extruder and the hot end. This is just cheap white ABS that I use for practically anything. PLA is obviously a bit runnier in both the regular and in the Volcano E3D hot end, but the Volcano is still surprisingly good there. Which means that even lower layer heights work decently with it, though I wouldn't really want to use it below a 0.25mm layer height, which is still very usable. And as always, I still need to mention the price, which is currently 20 Great British Pounds, so around 30 units in Euros or US Dollars. If you want a bit of a bigger variety, you can get the Volcano Eruption Pack, I guess you can see where they're going with this, for 25 pounds and get an additional three nozzles in different sizes, of which the largest one is 1.2 millimeters which is insanely large, but it's exactly what you need when you run one of the enormously large printers. The pricing I think is very okay considering that you're getting a well-engineered finished product and not some Chinese clone rip-off monstrosity. The Volcano surely isn't for everyone and everything, but it's surprisingly versatile and when things do get big and fast, the Volcano is a very capable plastic squirter that is definitely going to keep up. And that's my opinion on the E3D Volcano. I put a link to the Volcano assortment in the video description. If you like this video, please leave a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you didn't, but please then also leave a comment about what I can improve on. And let me know in the comments what you think about the Volcano. Is it something they would even consider using or would you never trade resolution and detail reproduction for faster prints? If you want to support my channel, consider replacing your eBay bookmark with one of the links in the video description below. That way I get a small kickback from the things you buy there. If you haven't done so already, feel free to subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of all the 3D printing goodness that I get to play with. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.